The uh, new logo for the London Olympics in 2012 has been unveiled in central London. It took a year to design and young people were involved in designing it. Well, let's go back to James Pearce, who's been there at the launch. James, over to you. And alongside me now, the man responsible ultimately for the logo, the chairman of London 2012, Lord Co. And I have to say, first of all, Lord Co, the initial viewer reaction hasn't been entirely positive. All I can tell you is that the overwhelming view here amongst all the young people and all our stakeholders has been very, very positive. We're very excited about it. Why this logo? Why? We think it is, it is useful. It absolutely builds on what we said in Singapore. And those weren't warm words to engage with young people. We have to do it in very demonstrable ways. We have to talk to them in language they understand and in technology that's familiar to them. And that's why this logo is particularly adaptable to that. Everybody now refers to 2012. It's a number that's out there. It has a, a very, very strong resonance in all our discussions with stakeholders and with a lot of young people. Uh, over the course of a year, we're very satisfied that we've got something that really can take this whole message on in a very positive way. This isn't just about the summer of 2012, this is about how we connect with young people over the next five years and we really believe that this, this meets everything we're, we're looking for. It's also got to be a hard-working brand. Well, explain because, how it's going to work. I mean, we see, I think it's orange behind you now, but there, there are four different colours, for example, aren't there? There are four different colours, four different colourways. We will have 2012 as the core brand. It will work for our sponsors. It will work eventually for any number of inspirational projects throughout the country. Uh, we, can, we will certainly use it in terms of our presence internationally. Once the Beijing Olympic Games are out, we're able to merchandise, to license, to market with it. It really is something that we believe will connect, and, and particularly with young people, because that has to be, in essence, what challenges us over the next five years. It's to make sure that these games are seen as relevant and, and, and frankly, providing a large invitation for people to be, take a part in it. One person says, as text is in, saying it looks like a, a beer mat looks out through the bottom of an empty glass. Well, that's an interesting observation. You can speak to any 20 people in here who will tell you exactly why this works and, and the young people from the school that were with us in Singapore that have seen it and, and, and are, are very approving of it. We don't do bland. This is not a bland city. We're not, we weren't going to come to you with a, a, a dull or dry corporate logo that will appear on a polo shirt and we're all gardening in it in a year's time. This is something that's got to live for the next five years and we believe this, is, this will do exactly that. When you go out and then try to inspire them, the youth, not just of Britain but the rest of the world, how important is this logo? Can, can one logo really inspire? It, it's, it's not the only part of the story but as a brand it, it's, it's something that helps us connect, it helps us bring our sponsors to the table, our sponsors need younger audiences all the time. It's something that really will be working very hard for us out there. But of course, a, a logo or a brand is not anywhere near the whole story. It's what you build around it, how you demonstrate to young people that these are a games for everyone and, and not just elite level competitors and not just London, but the whole of the UK. The logo from the 1948 Olympics, the last one London had, I'm sure you know there was a big picture of the Houses of Parliament on the front. Logos have certainly changed a bit over the intervening years, haven't they? Yeah, they have, and the world moves on, and, and other Olympic cities have not sought to do, over the five years, what we need to do. At the heart of our thinking is not just what we do in 2012 with the Games, but what we do afterwards, not just with bricks and mortar, but with the soft legacies, how we engage young people in this whole progress, how we get them into sports centres, how we get them into art, uh, art galleries, how we get them into theatres. This is something that we believe this brand will help us address. And perhaps more pressure on this logo than any other one, because there's more money that you need to raise from merchandising than any previous Games. Yeah, we've set ambitious targets. We are, in, a, we are in, a, in an ambitious market. We have an ambitious Games, and that's why this brand is different. It's edgy. It's not something that is going to just have a shelf life of a few months. It's something that we really can build on over the next five years. I was always told by your staff before I saw the logo that when I saw it, it would eventually grow on me. Are you confident for the, the viewers who don't like it at the moment that eventually, over the course of time, yeah, that they'll, mean, they'll it, like it? Instant observations are, are always a little bit hit and miss. What we believe we have is something that will live, something that will help us in that process of engagement, something that will help us bring those sponsors that we need to come to the table in order to stage a fantastic Games and something that has an international traction that is about London, that is about the nation, is about national pride 
and appeals to young people. Maybe we've given you an idea of something you can merchandise now. Beer mats, beer mats with a, with a London logo. I don't think we'll be doing beer mats. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. From uh, North London, back to you in the studio.